President Trump did a campaign-style rally in Michigan over the weekend during the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And when he brought up the issue of North Korea, listen to what the audience started chanting. So we have to renegotiate these deals. If you look at China, last year with China, and look, he's been of great help, President Xi. He's a friend of mine, but he likes China. I like the USA, but he's a friend of mine. But you know what? He's been a great help on the border with North Korea, and a lot of good things are happening there. A lot of good things. I'm not going to give you what's going to actually happen, because we don't really know. But I'll tell you one thing, we're not playing games. And I remember, you know, it was very rough three, four months ago. That's very nice, thank you. I like how that even made him laugh. He's like, what is it, Nobel? <laughs> so, listen, um, my take on this is a little different from, you know, most of the people, when you turn on MSNBC, the position that they'll take on this. I will just, I'll take it if Donald Trump sits passively and lets North Korea and South Korea make peace, because make no mistake about it, they're the ones leading this endeavor. And the new president of South Korea, Moon Jae-in, is a pro-peace candidate. The President Park, the former president, was a hawk, was right-wing. She was impeached on corruption charges. So the new president comes in. That president's pro-peace. Immediately, boom, we're sitting at the table having peace talks. So, uh, and it's also the activists in South Korea that deserve a lot of credit for, for where we're at right now on that issue. So they're moving forward uh, with peace initiatives I'll take it if Trump just sits by, lets them do, let them make peace, and then, listen, even if you want to come out and take credit, Don, fine. I'll fucking take it. Go out and take credit and say, at least peace happened there under my administration, even though I wasn't responsible for the peace. He was just talking about how he wants to bomb the fuck out of North Korea. We will rain fire and fury on them. It'll be tremendous. It'll be like something you've never seen before. Unbelievable. That's what it'll be. Believe me. He was just talking about bombing them. So obviously he's not leading the peace initiative, obviously. So even though the credit really belongs in South Korea, and yes, to factions of North Korea, without a doubt, I'll take it if he just sits by passively and lets it happen, and then pretends like, oh yeah, I had a lot to do with that. I'll fucking take it. As long as you don't bomb, I'll, I'll be happy, and I'll say, you're somewhat of a success on the issue of North Korea. So I'll give him a little more credit than most uh, Democrats will, without a doubt. But come on, man, Nobel Peace Prize. Now listen, I was very critical when Obama got Nobe uh, a Nobel Peace Prize or two or whatever the fuck he did. Here's a, here's a new rule. You're not allowed to, sorry to steal from Bill Maher, you're not allowed to um, get a Nobel Peace Prize if you've ever called a drone strike. Particularly drone strikes that have killed civilians. Obama killed many civilians with his drone strikes. Trump killed even more. He already surpassed Obama in civilian drone deaths. Uh, and he's only a, a little over a year into his administration. So, uh, no, none of you can get a fucking Nobel Peace Prize. Obama bombed seven countries. Donald Trump's bombing eight countries. Trump brags about torture. Increased drone strikes 432%. His first military act as president was a botched raid that killed an eight-year-old American girl. So, no, no, you're not fu a Nobel Peace Prize. Get the fuck out of here. As, as Donald Trump is... Uh, it passed a tax bill that gave 83% of the benefits to the top 1%. Here's a guy who uh, a million people lost uh, health insurance under his first year as president. You want a fucking Nobel Peace Prize? Get out of here! Well, actually, to be fair, I don't even think he wants it. He was surprised by the audience. But how blinded are you and how much of a partisan loser are you if you, even if you're a fan of Donald Trump, which at this point, I don't know how that's possible, but if, even if you're a fan of him, Really? You're not... You're not objective enough to understand that he doesn't deserve a Nobel Peace Prize? Now, again, I just told you, I'm against Obama getting them too, so this isn't a partisan thing. But I'm gonna be objective about it and say Obama doesn't, didn't deserve one, and obviously Donald Trump doesn't fucking deserve one! Donald fucking Trump... He said on the campaign trail, we have to take out their families, talking about the families of terrorists. 
And then guess what? He got in there and now we're killing the families of terrorists. There was the story from the other week. The CIA was talking about a strike they did and they told the president, uh, Mr. President, we waited for the civilians to leave from, from the house and then we bombed when we thought it was just militants in there. And Trump said, quote, why did you wait? Okay, that's what a terrorist says. Yeah, you heard me right. That's what a terrorist says. Sure, I, I want to kill civilians on behalf of uh, a political ideology. That's what I want to do. Okay, then that's the definition of terrorism. And you have the nerve to entertain the idea, and the people in the audience have the nerve to think for a second that he deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. And then, of course, listen, you have to bring up the hypocrisy of when, uh, when Obama said, as he did with Iran, for example, hey, I'll talk to them without preconditions. Everybody on the right uh, was totally outraged. And they said, oh, how dare you, uh, you know, sit at the table with this her hideous, terrible, um, terroristic, authoritarian regime. You're, you're giving them credibility simply by sitting across the table from them. That's so irresponsible. But then the idea of Trump talking to Kim Jong-un, they're like, oh, I think it's a great idea. Whenever Obama sat across the table from people you thought were bad regimes, you acted like Obama's a fucking appeaser, and a useful idiot for doing it. When Trump does it, you think, Nobel Peace Prize! I'm just so sick of the, the, the rank partisanship. And by the way, the same thing goes in the other direction, too. There are people on, on the Democratic side who liked when Obama spoke to people who are our enemies. But now when Trump was like, I'll sit with Kim Jong-un, they were like, it's a bad idea. Why is that a bad idea? I mean, I get that Trump's unhinged and he's an idiot, and you might not want him talking to anybody, but just the idea of hey, maybe we'll talk before we start bombing because that's what really what the deep state wants to do. That's obviously preferable. So let's just have a, have a standard and stick to it. My standard is war should be an absolute last resort and done only for defensive purposes. That's my standard. So I, if, I'm being, if I'm sticking to that standard, I say, okay, I'm happy when anybody, whenever we're talking to our enemies because that means that we're further away from actually doing some sort of bombing mission. Um, but listen, the facts are the South Korean president and, and the activists who have been working on peace deserve the credit for this. Not fucking Donald Trump. No, he doesn't deserve a fucking Nobel Peace Prize. If, if all this pans out, it, it's obvious to me that, you know, uh, Moon Jae-in might deserve a Nobel Peace Prize. And by the way, he's brilliant because he's stroking Trump's ego as he's doing the hard work and moving towards peace. There are reports from nuclear experts that behind the scenes, every time Moon Jae-in uh, gets somewhere in peace negotiations, he turns around and goes, oh, Donald Trump, you deserve all the credit. And he tells Trump that, and that means Trump is more likely to let Moon Jae in keep doing what he's doing. He's like, oh, he's, he's a fan of Trump, so I like him. So he's a good friend of mine, unbelievable friend of mine. And that's true that that's a strategy that works with Trump. Fucking stroke his ego, make him think he's responsible for whatever good is happening, and then he's like, you should keep doing good and then keep giving me the credit, because that's tremendous. So... That's unbelievable to me. Even if you're a Trump fan, I don't get how, like, it, I, I would hope there are some Trump fans that are honest who are like, yeah, I'm a Trump fan, but obviously you shouldn't get a Nobel Peace Prize because we're not even really for peace. <laughs> like, admit that. Like, yeah, I'm not pro-peace. I'm in favor of bombing. I want to bomb everybody into submission. So, okay, if you want to bomb everybody into submission, fine. I disagree with you, and I think that's monstrous. But at least understand that if you're pro-bombing, that's not peace. That's the opposite of peace. It's like saying I'm for, you know, I'm fucking for virginity, as the old quote goes. Well, that's not a thing. <laughs> Just like it's not a thing like, uh, you know, hey, he might be bombing eight different countries and he talk, brags about torture and all that stuff, uh, but he's a good guy. What? <laughs> that's not peace. That's the opposite of peace.